have on these tomatoes. Mm. So good. The quinoa, before you start to cook it, you want to rinse it in like a steel, like a little, like a fine mesh sieve because each one of these seeds has this like little bitter outer coating called saponins, which if you cook it without rinsing it, um, can end up tasting bitter. So just put the, um, the dry quinoa seeds into a, a wire mesh sieve and just rinse it under cold water for like 30 seconds and just kind of like rinse it. Not quite as, uh, it's not the same as like rinsing your rice before cooking it, but give it a good aggressive, like, you know, rinse underneath some running water for like 30 seconds and then you'll end up with this. This goes into a cooking pot of your choice. Um, because I'm only making this for myself and I'm making like a couple of um, portions worth. This is a half cup of dried quinoa that's been rinsed in um, under running water for like 30 seconds. To half a cup of quinoa, which actually makes like two portions for me, you're going to add an entire cup of water. And you're going to turn your heat on and you're going to bring the water up to a boil. That's going to take a couple of minutes. And once the quinoa, the water that the quinoa is in comes to a full rolling boil, you're actually going to turn your heat down to a simmer. So once you have uh, your quinoa going at a simmer, and you are going to leave this alone for about 15 minutes. So it's been 15 minutes since we started cooking. We brought it up to a boil and then brought it down to the simmer. If it looks like you've run out of water sooner, you can add like a little splash of water halfway through, but that's actually a really good thing to do anyway. Like cook, check halfway through, make sure that there's either too much water or not enough water. This is, quinoa cooks differently than rice, so it's kind of a good idea just to kind of keep an eye on it. I haven't added any oil to this, and because, look, it's not like a starchy grain like, like a rice or a wheat, um, it doesn't really stick to the pot as much as I think it would if it was a rice or a wheat kind of grain. So at the 15 minute mark, once all the water has evaporated, you're gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and you're going to put a lid on it and just let it steam for five minutes um, just so that the rest of the water just gets absorbed and uh, while that is steaming in there I'm going to go and grab some vegetables out of the fridge and we'll make a really light salad using this. I've got a English cucumber which to me reminds me of Japanese cucumbers. American cucumbers are like big and thick and like they have bigger seeds. Um, the Either the Persian cucumbers or the English cucumbers I think are better for this particular uh, recipe. So I'm going to take half of that, the other half side, and I'm just going to kind of just take some of the skin off. And you can leave the peel on if you want completely or remove it completely. This, that's completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. And see how the seeds are a lot smaller in these. So it's a little bit easier. You don't get a lot of those like the big cucumber, American cucumber seeds in your, in your mouth, uh, which might kind of mess with your mouthfeel. But if you can't find uh, English or Persian or Japanese cucumbers where you are, American cucumbers are just fine. You know, slice these long ways. And then you're going to chop them 
This is kind of like a uh, like a Mediterranean version of like an Italian chopped salad. So you want to cut your pieces all um, into kind of things that fit in, uh, onto like a spoon um, and are all kind of like the same size and shape. And that goes into my now I like big salads, so I like using my ramen bowl for this. So I like having all the cucumbers on the bottom. And if you want, you can actually use salad greens as well. I tend to like this kind of chopped salad feel, so I kind of omit the big leafy greens and just kind of stick with like a basic cucumber. Um, you're going to go ahead and add your cooked quinoa on top of this. Now you can, let this chill in the fridge first before you use it in the salad. Um, I kind of like a warmish salad, so <laughs> I just put this right on top. And then the other half is just going to go in the fridge for use at a letter, for a later recipe. I'm going to then take a handful. Now, I don't have specific measurements for this. It's kind of a, you know, clean out your fridge kind of salad. But um, go ahead and take a handful of parsley. And you're going to go ahead and chop that up as well. And this is kind of like when you start uh, making it look pretty, if you're going to, you know, make it for somebody else um, or even just for yourself, you know, self-care is self-care. So. so once you have that, you're going to take uh, some fresh mint. And these stalks are a little bit more woody than the parsley ones, so I like to make sure that I remove every leaf and get rid of the stems. I'll go ahead and chop that up as well. Now, most people will be like, mince is usually like for desserts and things, but honestly, it's really good in salads. Adds this little extra um, light kind of flavor. If you don't have mint, you could use basil on this. It's really, really good with basil. Then it becomes more of an Italian flavored salad. But the mint really does kind of make this more like a Mediterranean Greek type salad. To this, we're also going to add some chopped, I just bought some roasted uh, salted pistachios that are already salted, you know, so they're already kind of flavored. Um, they're already shelled. So we're gonna add a handful of those. Um, you can add these whole, but again, I kind of like this whole idea of a chopped salad, so we're gonna chop these up as well. And if you don't have pistachios, you can do chopped almonds, you can do chopped hazelnuts. Each nut kind of has a different flavor, so um, use your favorite uh, roasted, salted, shelled nut in this recipe. Again, because we're kind of going for like a Mediterranean uh, Greek chopped salad feel, I'm using pistachios. And then the final ingredient for, for this particular salad that we're making today is feta cheese. And I love feta. I've done recipes uh, before that are like just watermelon and mint and feta cheese. And that just makes like a perfect kind of sweet and savory salad. I love that salad, but this is like my second most consumed salad, especially during the summertime. And especially if I don't have any watermelon around, or if I'm not kind of, if I'm not really looking for um, a sweet 
fruity salad. This is like a perfect salad for the summertime that's a little bit more savory. Now you can add sliced tomatoes to this if you'd like um, for a little extra flavor, if you like tomatoes um, or not. And so this is, this is the base of our salad. All we do here is add a little bit of salt. Not too much salt because that, that feta is already pretty salty. And some cracked black pepper. And you can add or you can add as much or as little as you want of that. And then to this, we're going to add three spoonfuls. Again, this is this is up to your taste and the size of the salad you're making. So you can, in my case, because I'm making a larger salad, I'm adding three spoonfuls of lemon juice. And two tablespoons of like a good olive oil. That's one of the, the things about, you know, if you use like a good olive oil for salads because you're not cooking with it, you kind of want to pick an olive oil that has a lot of flavor. Our salad is done. It didn't take that much time to cook the quinoa. And in fact, you can actually make the quinoa up to five days ahead. It keeps for about a week, not quite seven days, but five days in the fridge. And once you cook the quinoa, it actually keeps in the freezer for up to two months. And then all you have to do is kind of reheat that in the microwave right before you want to eat it. Um, so let's dig in. This looks so good. <laughs> all you're going to do is just kind of mix this up. I actually found some heirloom cherry tomatoes in my fridge as well. So I added some of those after plating initially. And you also do want to kind of mix them together because you don't want to get a full mouthful of nothing but parsley because that can get kind of herby in your mouth. You want to have all the other flavors in there. Um, and if you find that uh, you need a little bit more lemon juice or a little bit more olive oil um, or salt and pepper, you can add that to your, to your taste. Mm. The quinoa is nutty and slightly chewy, so it kind of gives you that feeling that you're having that kind of, that carby, I don't know, um, mental boost that you think that you're eating, like an orzo pasta or like maybe some rice, but it's quinoa, so it's actually super high in protein, very high in fiber and lots and lots of vitamins. Mm. That feta cheese and the pistachios give this like additional kind of little salty umami-ish boost. Have one of these tomatoes. Mm. So good. Super tasty just by itself. You can have it with like a little side soup if you want. This is also really, really good like in a pita pocket. Um, and then you can have it as a sandwich. Mmm. There are all sorts of things that you can do with quinoa. Today all I did was make like a quick clean out the refrigerator kind of Mediterranean salad. But you can do this with a whole bunch of different things. You can actually use quinoa as a filler for meatballs. Um, so tasty. <laughs> I 
I'm going to keep eating this for the rest of my lunch. So glad that you joined me. I hope that you give quinoa a shot. I know that it looks like bird seed before you cook it, but I promise you that if you give it a little bit of water and some heat and you cook it up, it becomes this like chewy, slightly nutty, kind of like grain mouthfeel food that if you're staying away from gluten or you're staying away from like heavier, simple carbs like white rice, um, this will actually mentally give you that feeling that you're eating something kind of chewy and carby. So give it a shot.